the low. Which brings me back to one of the highs of confession, which is when you do screw everything up, going to confession. One of the big things about being Catholic is me going to confession. I go to confession too regularly because I sin too regularly. Now, I should really say the high of confession isn't going to confession. I should really say the high of being Catholic is leaving the confessional. That's an excellent feeling, that leaving the confessional. You can probably guess what the low of being Catholic is. Waiting in line for that confession. <laughs> but you ever, you ever had somebody who goes in there and I don't know how long they're going to take, but they must have really done something or they're a slow talker. But you're standing there and you're saying, really? Come on, this is the worst feeling. I mean, I'd rather be at the DMV. I'd rather stand in any line than the confessional line. It takes enough to say, okay, I've sinned. I, I'm gonna, I've done wrong, now I'm going to go. So you, you examine your conscience, you realize what you've done, you're ready to go in and make that confession. And then there's 19 people in front of you. And then you start looking around at the people, and you go, oh, I bet they haven't done too much. I wonder if I can cut in front of her. <laughs> Ma'am, I got something. I mean, uh, you know, look, confession's done at 5 tonight. I, I got to make sure I get in on time. And then you're waiting in line, and maybe it's five minutes, and then maybe it's ten minutes or something like that, and it's awkward, and it's humbling, and it's so embarrassing. I, uh, th I don't mean this as a promotion, but I've got a book out called Sinner. It's going to be coming out this fall. And the only reason I bring it up is because I talk a lot about my sins in this book. There's no pictures. There's no diagrams. It's a, a family-friendly book. But I talk a lot about my sins. It's embarrassing to talk about my sins. It's uncomfortable to talk about my sins. It's one thing to do it in the confessional when the priest can't tell anybody else what he hears. But when you say it in book form, so that anybody who cares can actually read about this and go, I'm not absolving you, I'm judging you on this. I go, no, that sounds about right, I understand. But one of the greatest things about being Catholic is that at the end of the day when I sin, and I do, when I sin, I don't just have to sit there and say, God, I'm really sorry, and hope God heard me or something like this, but that I can actually go and a minister of the church can absolve me in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. In fact, I've been there so many times I could probably even say the words, not that they'd be valid if I said the words, Father, but I hear the words enough in my head that I'm like, oh, I know how that through the ministry of the church. Oh, yeah, I know that whole thing. It's quite nice. I can hear confessions, but I can't absolve them. That's right, and that's what we're going to be doing after my talk tonight. So... <laughs> You'd like to join me back there with anything you got. You get that off of your chest, and then uh, I'll pass it along, and uh, then you could actually be validly absolved, but I'll certainly, that could be my second book, Things I Heard in the Confessional <laughs> While Not Absolving People. So I've never gotten over this whole idea that the fact of the matter is we sin. We all sin. We're all sinners, and yet... We believe in a God who is merciful. We believe in a God who is loving, and he wants to bring us back. He wants to forgive us. And yet, so many people don't go to confession. It seems to me the strangest thing. I understand the real lows of confession being how awkward and uncomfortable. I was at confession like two weeks ago. I'm standing there. You know, you know where you shouldn't chat? Uh, confession lines. <laughs> Girl comes up to me. Hey, Lino. Yeah. I mean, you know, come on. I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying. I mean, yes, but I, I, I have to wear sunglasses and a baseball hat around here. Yes. I was listening to your show two weeks ago. Good. Thank you. It was really funny. I tried to call in, but I couldn't get through. I'm like, you're not getting through right now either. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this right now. You understand what I'm all about right now? It's so embarrassing. It's so uncomfortable. We should embrace this sacrament, but I just saw, I would, I would love there to be a way that even it was more anonymous. I would love us to somehow, we each have like a, ca we're all in a box and the, the priest comes to each of us <laughs> instead of us standing in the line to go to confession. Not a bad idea, believe me. I've, th I've thought that through. I just haven't figured out who's going to build the structure yet that's going to make this happen. It's a crazy thing saying our sins out loud. It's a crazy thing to say our deepest, darkest things, the things we're most embarrassed about. And it's yet, it's the normal way of having our sins absolved. It's the normal way that this is going to be the high and the low of the Catholic life. And it's another one of those things about being Catholic where you say, well, we've got it. We might as well enjoy it. Because my friends who sin, which is everybody on earth, but I, I, would, I would feel horrible if they just had to sit there and they just say, well, God, I'm sorry. Thank you. Amen. Like, it feels like their confession, would, I, I, 
to say out loud what you've done and then have the minister of the church absolving you makes so much more sense than, and there's biblical reasons and everything else, but for me to just sit there and just tell God, I am sorry, good night, and then go to sleep, to me doesn't work as well as the way the confessional works today. So it's a great thing about being Catholic and something that we, I personally love. Another thing that's great, another high of being Catholic, are the saints. Now, you know, there's the most popular saints. There's the, there's the saints everybody asks the intercessions of. But what I really like about Catholicism is we, we've, got the, uh, we've got a deep roster. We've, we've, we've got a roster like you wouldn't believe. We've got so many saints sitting on that bench. Nobody, look into it one time. Type up saints of the 1200s. You'll find yourself nine, ten people who've got nothing to do in heaven. They, 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 nobody's asked their intercessions in, in, in 800 years. You think about this. Now, I know heaven is beyond time and space. However, everybody's going to St. Padre Pio. You heard this? I'm Italian, so I can say this. In Italy, the, most, the number one person to go to for your prayers isn't Jesus. It's not God the Father. It's not God the Holy Spirit. It's Padre Pio. St. Padre Pio is the number one guy. Jesus is like four. It's Padre Pio, then Mary, then, then people go to Jesus in Italy, which is, so the saints are popular, but Padre Pio's got his work cut out for him. Everybody's asking St. Padre Pio's intercessions. One of the great things about being Catholic is that whatever it is we do for a living, or don't do for a living, we've got a saint who was, who was like that on earth, who can hear our prayers, and who will intercede for us, and who you can have that bond with. We've got a patron saint of hangovers. Whatever is going on in your life, we have a patron saint who we can ask the intercessions from. This is a genius thing about Catholicism. Now, one of the newest people whose intercessions we can ask for is Blessed John Paul II. I was in Rome uh, what, three, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, anybody? Three weeks ago, right? May 1st today, yeah. Three weeks ago, uh, I was there with a big group of listeners that we had brought to Rome for the beatification of John Paul II. Now, there's, that's a high uh, of unbelievable stuff. I mean, for me, some people had argued maybe that, that the beatification was too soon because, you know, he died in 2005 and Benedict XVI, there's supposed to be a five-year waiting period before they even open up the books on a saint to, to see if the person should be canonized, I mean. And, you know, Benedict XVI waived the five-year rule and, and, you know, so from, he died, in, uh, he died in April of 2005 and he was beatified May 1st, 2011. For a lot of people, that was too quick. For me, it couldn't have been quicker. It could have been too soon. I, the, the three days later would have been fine with me because for me to be able to have someone who I had met personally, but someone who we'd all known in one way or another, someone who had uh, an iPod, someone who had, I mean, I don't, J JP2 wasn't like constantly listening to it, but he did have an iPod and you give him credit for that. He had a laptop, he watched TV, he was into sports, he was into theater and music and everything else. He wore Bono sunglasses. This is a regular guy who, to know that someone is, a, is in heaven who we can ask their intercessions from, not just someone who lived, uh, you know, 1,100 years ago and died of the plague, but now we can ask their intercessions of, but someone who we know, someone who we remember his death, we remember his funeral six years ago, now we can ask for his intercessions. That's a real high of Catholicism to say, here is someone in heaven who, you remember when he died six years ago, now the church is declaring we should be asking for his intercessions. The real low is that a million and a half Polish people showed up in the city of Rome, and what a nightmare this was. My, uh, these poor, this poor group of listeners I brought with me were, were beaten and punched and pushed. It was a nightmare. I had a press pass, so I didn't deal with any of that. But for them, what a nightmare. We, so it was three weeks ago today, so it was dinner, Saturday night. I said, all right, everybody go to sleep, and we're going to wake up at about 5 in the morning. We'll go out to... You guys will wake up at 5 in the morning. I have a press pass. But you guys will wake up at 5 in the morning and get in that line. We were going home from dinner that night. It was about 10, 1030 at night. And as we were walking towards the hotel by St. Peter's, we had all these Polish people sleeping outside. Everybody was already asleep. And we said, oh, no, I think this is the line. It's 1030 at night. They're already lined up. So these, this whole group of listeners, we let them go back to the hotel and take a shower. And then they had to go and stand in line. What a high, the beatification of John Paul II, and what a low. They didn't even get to sleep outside. They had a stand. This, this is what they did. It's 1.30 in the morning. It's 2 in the morning. It's two. They did this all night. They did get into the square. 
so that they could be in St. Peter's Square for the beatification. 